What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Vintage Cube Draft here on your Vintage Cube Draft hub. So, what's... Well, I guess we gotta... Mm, there we go. So, what's the, what's the beautiful pick here? Soul Transfer? No, I don't think so. Brazy B? Hmm, could be. Primeval Titan? Very likely. Huh. This is an interesting pack. It's not an overpowered pack by any means. That's a lot of good role players, though. Caracas. I've really appreciated Gix every time I've drafted him. I'll tell you what you can do. Stiff Draft, Prime Daddy. I don't know if any of those... I don't know if that's a... <laughs> What's the stiff? Just just Prime Daddy is the stiff? Okay, here we go. Look, I did it. I actually do like the Glorybringer. Glorybringer is a card that I'm consistently uh, satisfied with. You always left me satisfied. I like a Remand here. I also like a Wooded Foothills. I like a Tireless Tracker, I think. <laughs> Those are unrelated comments. Oh, okay. I actually didn't know that. I got a stiff draft for you, Prime Daddy. Hmm. That is a stiff draft, I guess. Tireless Tracker, Wooded Foothills, Remand. Resto is not terrible. You can blink, blink our, our dad. I think Noxious Gearhulk is way too expensive for this ability. For six mana, I think you want something more like Grave Titan or... I don't know, Prime Titan. Prime Titan. A Titan, basically. Whereas like Chupacabra was like great because it's just cheaper. It's just, I think Chupacabra was, was really good in the cube. Might just be Tireless Tracker. I don't feel like any of these cards are really pulling me that heavily out of green. We could be Bant and take this Teferi. I actually kind of like that. Masika's Chariot also pretty decent. I actually have yet to draft an Asika's Chariot. Land and Resto, Cones back. Good old Cones. Cones of Dunshire. Uh, my nose is really itching. I'm not picking it, I swear. It's just it's just itchy. I don't know why. Uh, might just be a Asika's Chariot. I also like Teferi. I think a Seeker's probably the safer choice. I mean, I guess we'll just take a Seeker's Chariot. Oh, I like this Nissa. This Nissa just wins games. I really hope this Wall of Roots comes back. Uh, I could see taking a Utopia Sprawl here. We've also been past Wooded Foothills, Taiga, and Stomping Ground. I keep wanting to try this card, but it hasn't worked out for me yet. Trying it hasn't worked out. The card itself, I, I don't know. I can't tell you if it's worked out or not. Yeah, I think it actually is Utopia Sprawl based on this this configuration, though. It's basically a one-mana ramp dork, mana dork, that you can't actually kill. Well, this, this pack is not great for us. Birthing Pot is a complete... I, I think Birthing Pot is terrible in the cube. You just can't actually build around it. It's just not... You don't get creatures with that consistent of costs. Like right now I have a 3-mana creature and a 6-mana creature. And then my other cards are a 7-mana card and a 4-mana card that aren't creatures. So it's just... Uh, I mean, it's not going to be Field of the Dead. It might be Crop Rotation in case we do get Thespian Stage and Dark Depths. Elspeth, the double white Elspeth, huh? In our in our mono green deck. I think it's Deep Forest Hermit here. Because there's nothing else really. And I think that guy's fine. Oh, an Elvish Mystic? Sure. Oh, Pajama Glory. Thank you for the sub, buddy. Welcome back. Glad to glad you found that I'm I'm streaming again, my dude. Really appreciate it. Uh I don't like Wasteland. I don't appreciate uh the 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 I, I want to say play patterns it produces. 
So I don't want to play it now. I mean, if it comes back, I'll take it, but I, I don't I don't value Wasteland and Strip Mine very highly. But, I mean, that's just me. Like, I, I understand they're good cards. I just don't appreciate them, really. Yeah, like, it's just, it's not fun for me. So. I'm loving it. Are you guys loving it? It was... Uh, so, so like I'm wondering like for those who like come come back and don't know that I'm they're like oh man Frank is streaming again I didn't know that what should I what can I do differently to help you know that because like I feel like you know I suggest following or subscribing you get notifications like when I go live so like if I stop streaming for a while and then I come back you should get that notification theoretically so I'm just not sure like what more I could be doing to let people know Billboards in major cities. Smart. That's good. What could go wrong? Oh, Wooded Foothill came back? I'll take a Wooded Foothill. Oh, uh, I like Terra Sunder. Also, the Taiga came back. This makes me think that Stomping Ground might actually come back. And then we have a very decent red splash here. That's super weird, man. Man, way to drop the ball, YouTube. YouTube, you had one job. To send people the wrecks that they wanted. I need a handcrafted, personalized phone call. Yeah, if you guys want to put all your phone numbers in the chat, I can I can jot them down in my Rolodex. Oh my god, the Wall of Roots did come back. Absolutely love it. This is a great <laughs> 12 pick so far. Wow. I feel like every card is playable in some way. So I actually don't post on Twitter and Facebook as much when I go live. And the reason is solely because I don't want to like double post. <laughs> I don't want to be like, hey, live on Twitch. Hey, live on Twitch. And, you know, then I'm just like, people will get annoyed at that. If, oh, look, I have to see the same post on both Facebook and Twitter. On Twitter. And it's like, no one's calling it X, right? <laughs> it's like, no one's calling it that. I just want to make sure that. I guess saying it different. Yeah. But then I'm like crafting two separate posts a day. And like. It's, they also do this weird thing where like you get significantly less engagement if you don't post, if you post a link. Oh, cool. I'm just going to take a Black Lotus. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot shit. Oh, boy. Yep, that's good. Um, Yeah, like Twitch and Face, Twi Twitter, Twitter and Facebook do this weird thing where like if you post a link in the main post you get less engagement. And the theory is that those sites don't want to promote posts that lead them away from the site. They don't want to promote things that are going to take you to different pages, especially if those pages are also media based sites like Twitch or YouTube. Um, so a, a common tactic is to make your post and be like, Hey, I'm live on Twitch and then put the Twitch link in the following, like in the comments which just kind of makes it obnoxious because then like before I go live every time making four different unique posts on both Twitter and Facebook. And it's like, I don't want to like, and if I'm doing it every day, it feels really spammy. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's all meant. Maybe that's all in my brain. I don't know. I asked Ch chat GPT if you're streaming again, it told me you'd been dead for 24 years. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate, but this channel, however, is not unfortunate. Black Lotus into channel is basically all I've ever wanted to do in a mono green deck. So channel it is. Now let's get some big fat idiots. So far, I think, and I'm not saying that like I shouldn't do that. It's very possible that I probably should do that. I should be posting to both those places. Oh God, they're just giving it to me. All right, we'll just take Emrakul because now we have channel. Fantastic. Um, it's very likely I should be doing those things 
and that might be the correct course of action. But I think like it's a combination of like social anxiety and like, I, I just kind of don't want to like spam everything. Like I don't, I'd rather people just find me on my own than get tired of me. If that makes sense. Your obsession with channels is a Shakespearean character. I mean, I'm in green. I'm in the mono green deck. What do you want from me? I'm not going to pass it. I was going to add everything's coming up Millhouse to the soundboard. I forgot. To, I don't, I didn't forget to do it. I just wasn't committed to it, but I think I might because I feel like I have a lot of sound. Oh, natural order. Fudge. Okay. So basically my first four picks in this pack have been black Lotus channel, Emrakul and natural order. Holy Jesus. This is like the, this is like the, this is, this is just pack two. Holy crap. So what I was going to say is that I have a lot of, I have a lot of sound bites to denote negative things that happen in games, you know, like stop it, get some help or not great, Bob. I don't even know if you guys could hear those. If it was messed up, hold on. Not great, Bob. I think you can hear that. Um, however, I don't have a lot of sound bites to denote great things that happen, which I feel like I should, I should have more of. Babe, remember that time you were yelling at me because no one can hear the the things? Uh, Sylvan Library. Okie dokie. <laughs> this deck is... These picks are insane, dude. God, how do you know you're on the right track? Well, when you get Sylvan Library, Natural Order, Channel, Emrakul, and Black Lotus. And as your first five picks in a pack. That's how you know. Also, literally no one has subscribed to HelloFresh for this particular sponsorship. And it's kind of weird. I think it's very strange. HelloFresh is the sponsor until around early September. So if you guys want to check them out, you get half price off your first box and free shipping. Uh, I get a significant kickback. So it's a great way to support the channel. If you were like, hey, I'm going to donate five or ten subs to Frank's channel, literally just spend that at HelloFresh instead, you get something, and I will also get a larger percentage of that. So definitely consider that. HelloFresh is a great sponsor. We've loved them every time we got them. So definitely check them out. But this, this the sponsorship does end like September 4th, so you only have about a week left. So I would appreciate it if you guys checked them out, if you guys were looking for a meal delivery service or just wanted to try one out. Uh, they are a good one and you can cancel at any time. So there's no commitment. It's not like you have to buy four boxes to get the discount. You can literally get 50% off your first box, then cancel. And, uh, you know, I think it's questing beast here. Could also be force of vigor, but I think we have Rex age and I, I kind of think Rex age is just fine. Here's a finale. These two aren't, aren't as exciting. We could also take thespian stage. Did we pass a Dark Depths? Do you guys know if there was a Dark Depths in pack one that we passed? I don't remember there being one. But someone did mention that. Okay, I'm going to take this over Finale. Because we have Crop Rotation too. Ah, oh, Hexmage pack one. Got it. Um... This pack is not exciting for us. I guess we got, I guess we got all our, our whammies in the first packs. I don't think exploration is very good. Like, I think it's worse than than fast bond, and like fast bond is only playable in certain archetypes as is. So it's kind of weird. I'll take the triome here. I'm tempted to take both of these triomes because if we get like a Golos, it kind of starts letting us cast our things. But honestly, I want a Woodfall Primus because we don't have a ton of big creatures for both. Uh, I guess just for natural or we're not really going to channel a Woodfall Primus. Wow, Arbor Elf came back. Fantastic. I don't love Ren and Realm Breaker, but I think it's probably fine. Oh, Acidic Slime. Sure. <laughs> what? Like every secondary green card in these packs that's decent just came back. So that's pretty good. 
fast bond is a blue card unless you're playing time spiral or upheaval you don't really care about fast bond oh cool Leveled. sure you ever you ever uh played natural order for Leveled or like a finale of devastation or green sun zenith any of those cards Any of them at all. I also kind of wonder why sponsorships like HelloFresh end, right? Like you could just have that user code and that deal all the time. And then people just get your, your deal, you know? I mean, this is a great 18 cards and we have a whole pack left. I'm not even sure. I mean, this just means we'll probably get... Oh, wow. Last pick finale of Devastation. <laughs> I'm pretty sure no one in this fucking draft even knows what green cards are at this point. That's... That's that's ridiculous. It might just be Avenger here. They may not want to be obligated to track countless outdated affiliate codes in perpetuity. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, actually. Huh. Well, could be Avenger. I don't think it's Coalition Relic in the mono green deck. I don't think it's Crystalline Giant. I don't think it's a land. I think it could be Steel Seraph as well. Like a 5-4 flyer that gives your other, another creature flying vigilance. And it's also good with channel. I think we're just taking the... I think Steel Seraph is actually pretty reasonable here. I do like an Elder Gargaroth, but I think we're just taking Delighted Halfling because that card's very good. I'm sure, I'm sure Elder Gargaroth will table. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, good. <laughs> Oh, good times. Well, that does it. Pack it up. We could channel Blightsteel Colossus, but outside of channel, I don't love a Blightsteel Colossus. There's also 22 cards. We could easily play 16 lands with this deck and put Lotus as a land, so. We could also play Omneth and get it with Finale or Natural Order if we really wanted to. There's a Strip Mine. I do like a Boseju, actually. It's pretty sweet. Could also take Sundering Titan. Like, Sundering Titan's really good with Channel. Seiju is just a great land that we can easily play. We don't have Rafelos or Gaia's Cradle yet. I do think we should have a th another good target for channel. But I also bet he'll come back. I'm going to take the Seiju, and I'm going to bank on that Sundering Titan coming back. World Spine Worm, huh? Natural ordering for a World Spine Worm is kind of cool. Could also just take an Ignoble Hierarch. I mean, what else are we going to use to get 11 mana? We'd have to have 5 green in order to channel this guy out. It might just be Hierarch here. Like, there's so many ways that they kill this without putting it in the graveyard. I'm going to take the Hierarch here. I'm just not excited about World Spine Worm. I'm going to take Sylvan Carry added here for obvious reasons. A lot of these picks are very, very obvious. Oh, yeah, Ulamog. Fantastic. I would love for this Eternal Witness to come back, but right now I'd rather have a second Eldrazi to channel. Portal to Phyrexia. Hmm, interesting. Also, draw a Tree Speaker. Which is probably better than at least one of these. 
I keep trying to make portal happen, but I I also think we just might have enough ramp creatures. Is that just wrong? I'm gonna take portal. I think portal's just cool. Okay, Avenger came back. Elder Gargroth came back. I will definitely play an Elder Gargroth over something. That guy's just a beater. More like Bulamog, am I right? <laughs> yes. Yes, you are. Okay, nothing exciting here. We didn't get that Golos. Oh, Skull Clamp is actually pretty decent. I'll just take Deceiver Exarch so no one else can have it. Are you guys excited for Starfield next week? Because I sure am. <sighs> yep, had a feeling that guy was coming back. Uh, I'll just take the, sure, uh, this deck really turned out to be something. There's only like three cards I would have, I could have asked for that would have been a little bit better it would be Nissa who shakes the world. Um, Gaia's Cradle and Raffellos, which are both kind of staples in, in this deck. So we got a Thespian stage, but no real way to use it. We got Taiga and Wooded Foothills. I think we're just sticking with forests here. Cards that I could see playing, Skull Clamp, Portal. Uh, I don't care about Ren and Realm Breaker. It's basically just these. And we do need one cut here. Taking six day, sick days to play it, smart. I support, I support you. This deck looks pretty sweet as is. I mean, I kind of wonder if we want Skull Clamp here. Also, everything seems pretty relevant. I could see almost cutting Utopia Sprawl just because it's it feels worse than the creature. Um, yep, Stuart literally has exactly what I was thinking. Like it's 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 worse than these because these don't these both contribute to natural order and things like Crater Hoof. Um, and we also have four one drops. I could see cutting Sprawl. I also kind of want Skull Clamp in here, but I don't know if that's greedy. We have Sylvan Library. We have Tireless Tracker. I think I'm just going to play it like this and add 14, 14 forests and call it a day. Yeah, if you tell me Soul Drift's a card, I'd be like, okay, cool. You're drawing me a card. I wonder if I have face allergies, because like my whole face in this in this general area is like super itchy. What does that mean? Babe, you know what that means? Are you in the chat still? Why is my face all itchy? Uh I like Steel Seraph because it's just a nice it's another just creature to to channel out on turn two. It it means you have a case of the itchy face. Fuck. Doctors, you know? Is there anything they can't answer? It's because you're doing too much meth. I would think Coke. I would think cocaine. Like, I felt like I was like, I had, I, I felt like people would think I had like Coke nose. I'm like, I'm just like really itchy. But that's just like every day, every day I have like this. Like, I think it's when I get out of the shower. So it actually might be um, dry skin. It might just be a dry skin thing. I thought you weren't still in Florida. <laughs> Harsh, but fair. I am currently not in Florida, and I likely will not be for an extended period of time ever again. 
my mustache has hidden ticklers on it. So we, yeah, same. You always got to keep those, uh, those mustache hairs under control. I'm just trying to keep it real with you guys, okay? If there's like a nose situation where things are itching, I'm just gonna let you know because it's better than you think. And let I do have boogers that I just keep like like this endless flow of boogers that I'm picking. At least I assume that's better. That's just some assumption I'm making. Are you telling us you don't have endless boogies? I am. I am going to confirm that right now. Yes. Return an ooze from your graveyard to your hand. God, for four mana? God, I would really expect better than that. I feel like it should at least be returned to play if you're going to if you're gonna pay four for it. And it's so limiting. It's so restrictive. Uh, this hand seems fine. We can also cast Emrakul with this at some point, and it, and it can't be countered because it's legendary, so that's pretty cool. And it can't be countered naturally, so double uncounterability. It's an Odyssey card. Oh, that explains it, I guess. This hand really wants a channel or like a natural order. Okay, well, that that's that's the one, yeah. I guess if it had to be one, it should be the worst one. <laughs> Okay. Well. Might as well get in there, am I right? So unfortunately, Woodfall Primus is here. Do we just get Primeval Titan? Oh dear. Oh dear. Wait, what? Oh, and then they're going to reanimate it. Wow, that's pretty good. That's just a discard outlet? Okie <laughs> dokie. Cool. Cool. Wonderful. I, I guess I just lose. Fun game. Hmm. Yep. It's pretty good. Not actually sure what I can do against that. Maybe draw Steel Seraph and play it and hope they don't have an answer. Wow, flashing in a creature just to get it in the graveyard is pretty hilarious. It's literally just a poor man's collective brutality. Oh, God. It's definitely a male genitalia for a face moment, I think. What do you got here? What could it be? Nobody knows. They're really thinking about it. Oh, look, you did have a collective brutality. Okay, you get my natural order. Fantastic. Wow, they chose all three modes. They discarded a snuff out, a sphinx. That's hilarious. All right, well, cool. That was fun. Who didn't have a good time? Well. I'm just going to submit. Like, none of these cards would stop that. And I feel like we're fine if we don't have to deal with that, I guess. I don't know.
One land, huh? Yeah, okay. Do we just turn one of Sika's chariot? And then we can turn two Sylvan Library? I think that means you put Primeval Titan back. I mean, Portal would work, but I have to get to nine mana. Turn my chariot into turn two Sylvan Library seems like it could be good. Kitty cat's rolling. Give me that cat. What are the odds they brainstorm EOT? Zero percent. Sounds good. Flash. Reanimate. Collective brutality. Kill a cat. Look at my hand. They're choosing their modes right now. Oh, they're just flashing. Okie dokie. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Do you kill Chariot and Summon Library? Do you kill two cats? You kill Chariot and a cat? A land. You're killing a land even though I have a Sylvan Library in play. That's fascinating to me. I mean, my presumption is that uh, you're going to kill the Sylvan Library now when you reanimate your Ashen Rider. Or exhume him, I guess, and I have no creatures in my graveyard. Yep, there it is. Never fails. Oh, another land. This is all very fascinating. Well, I don't want any of these, unfortunately. That's a bummer. Hmm. Yep, this game went well. This is a token token, <laughs> just so you guys know. Oh boy. Yeah, I was definitely considering Finale for zero. Um, I don't actually know if that's good. This is a collective brutality, now they're gonna hit a cat token. Take our finale and gain two. Because I feel like if I can draw one land off the top here, then I can finale for one and get a creature. And, like, we're not under a ton of pressure. Like, they have a 5-5, five, five, but if they attack, we attack for 6. This is just a token, but this is a token token.
Oh, wow. Well, that's aggressive. Come on, land. Beautiful. Top, top. There's no creature in their graveyard. I can't imagine what they're going to do here. Days. Sure. I mean, if there's one more land, we all of a sudden have natural order into Crater Hoof. So. Sure. And we go to six. They go to two. We go to one. They die. Unless they do have collective brutality. Which turns the clock around. So if there's one land in the top three cards, we're I think we're doing okay. I mean, I think they're collective brutality in here. Oh, no, they get to take natural or never mind. Yeah, if they have brutality two games in a row, then, then we lose. Yep, cool. Of course they do. Yep. <laughs> it's like never fucking fails, dude. Oh, Lord. Yep. Let's see an Emrakul. Just another land, huh? Fantastic. Cool. That was a fun match. Completely determined by skill and not draws. Wow, this has just been such a pleasure. I, I'm such a lucky boy. I can't wait to go home. Uh, yes, I think a lot of games of Vintage Cube were determined by skill. I mean, broken cards don't mean like not skillful matches like i think there's still a lot of interplay but like when when your opponent gets like turn to flash iona into reanimate uh, against your mono green deck it's okay i mean it's just like it's it's just i also have combos similar to that and i don't get to draw my combos <laughs> so it's like well you need flash and iona or flash and ashen rider i need channel and ulamog or channel and emrakul I don't get my combos in two games, but they get theirs both games. So it's, I guess it's just kind of weird. This deck is nuts. It's not the deck. It's me. I'm going to turn this little fan on. No, you didn't say that. It was a joke I was making. A lot of forests. Looking good.
Well, it looks like we're both have looks like we both got jokes. I'll discard a forest. And now it's okay, we got it. We replaced it with another forest. I'm really just hoping questing beast goes the distance, right? I'm sure our three forests match up well with whatever six cards they have. There he goes. There goes my threat. Okay. Well, can't cast that guy yet, so that's unfortunate. Maybe next turn. They'll just give me a channel to make it easier to cast this guy, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll draw a channel here. Cast him as a man. Oh, Bitter Blossom. Fascinating. And a Tenacious Underdog. Acidic Slime. I think I just want to Acidic Slime the Bitter Blossom here. You don't deserve this. Okay, I'm feeling better about their three cards to our two cards. However, now they have four cards. And they have this guy, so it's basically they have like a whole full hand. Unbelievable. Hmm. Well, that's fascinating. Oh, okay. Now you're going to play Murder Rider. As a man. You're going to cast him as a man. Okay. It's all fine. Really? You're tapped out. Like... Just gonna vlog with my O4. Okay. Really appreciate it. Give this dude flying. Look at that flying slime. There's the land we were looking for. There it is. <laughs> oh, good times. Oh, Liliana. Okay. Am I sacrificing? Six, seven, eight. <sighs> I want to sacrifice acidic slime here, but I think Wall of Roots is probably worse at this point. I do wonder if they have an answer for Steel Seraph. Interesting. You weren't going to attack with this guy, but then you decided to. Like, if they have a two-mana burn spell, I don't care. I just don't really care about that. Which seems kind of likely. Yeah, I'm just going to take it because we just gained five on our turn. Oh, double mox. Fantastic. Ah, oh, recurring nightmare. Well, so long, forest. This is an interesting choice because you don't get to keep it. Fascinating. Finale for four. Let's get a questing beast. Wait, they killed our questing beast. Well, we're still going to finale for four. That doesn't change anything. Oh, wait, we can still get it. Because <laughs> that's how that card works. This is 11 damage. Oh, that's pretty good. I guess we just win the game. All right. Well, questing beast is a hell of a card. Yeah, it still hits us for three, but I don't know if it's worth, like, hitting us for three just to get rid of their, getting rid of their murder strider. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think we'll just submit like this again. Like, I don't, I don't know. We don't really have like sideboard specific options for murderous rider, Liliana, tenacious underdog. Okay. Not terrible. Okay. Well, that's good. Good for you. What if little Frankie drew his channel? Wouldn't that be cool? Super cool. So next time we can play Elvish and Carry Added? That's so much mana. Or we can just draw a channel. What's it going to be? Channel? 
or any other card in our deck. Cool. Well, <laughs> I think we're getting rid of Ulamog because, let's be honest, we're not going to draw this channel. Okay. Earthquake for one. Oh, uh, there was no previous draft. This was the first draft. My sleep schedule's been kind of messed up, so I got up a little... I couldn't sleep, and... Uh, we got rid of this guy. Sure. They have two cards. We have two cards. They're going to make us both discard, I presume. That's pretty good. Are you getting rid of my chariot? Are you just making a 1-1? One, one? You are getting rid of my chariot. Wow, that's really good. Also really rude. Oh, that's fascinating. You're gonna make me do this? All right, hold on. One, two, one, two, three, four. Make a four, four. Let's attack Duretti with both of our little guys. We lose a guy, but they lose a Duretti. So that seems fine. Oh, a little snake man. Yep, cool. Is the dash only an enchantment? What does that mean? What are you saying to me? Oh, the minus. Got it. Uh, destroy an artifact or an enchantment. I feel like we just play this against their Mox Ruby. I don't think they have anything great. Like we're never gonna if they have re if they have recurring nightmare we're never gonna be able to get a recurring nightmare. They're also in top deck mode and they have a Liliana so they can just play what they draw. This makes it harder for them to play what they draw. I mean I guess we're just hoping they don't hit a recurring nightmare. Thank you. Eric with the resub. Thank you, my dude. 59 months. That's almost five years. Good Lord. God, the times we've had. Oh, the journeys we've been on. Oh, good. Well, I guess their graveyard trespasser flips. It's bad tie time. <laughs> it's, uh, that's what I always say. Make a 6-6. Six, six. All right, well. So, we can attack Liliana with all of these, and then Liliana just... They go, they're go. they going to go block big guy with snake, block 2-2. Two, two. So we lose a 5-5 five, five and a 2-2. Two, two. Which I think is actually fine because they're going to have Massacre Worm anyway. So they're going to Recurring Nightmare and get a Massacre Worm. So we're going to lose the 2-2 two -two anyway. So this actually makes it so we take a little less damage.
Yep, there it is. <laughs> I mean, we knew we knew it was coming. So they're gonna get back Massacre Worm. Yep, we're gonna lose our one one and our and our two two. Probably block the graveyard glutton if they choose to attack with it. I mean, if we hit a channel with an Ulamog, I think it's going to be pretty good. This is only 4-4, four, four, right? Sure. I mean, I'd rather make another 7-7 seven, seven next turn, which can contest this, rather than just keep a 4-4 four, four and make it have a 2 Nissa. Okay. Well, not a channel. I mean, if they have an answer for our 7-7, seven, seven, it's pretty bad because we go to 5. That's actually shockingly obnoxious. I think it's fine. Like, we're not in a position to win with a Nissa Plus anyway. I mean, having a, a drawing a creature here would be nice, but... Sure, sack your snake to get back. Graveyard Glutton, got it. Yeah, that's obnoxious. <laughs> Five mana, Primeval Titan, fantastic. All right, can we survive at six is the question. I think they just attack with everything, right? Sure. Oh, this is interesting. I was expecting them to attack a Massacre Worm because if we kill it, then they get to get it back. So what is this? 7, 14, and they each get plus 5, plus 5. So it's 24. I guess they could literally just block with one guy. Yeah, we'll just take it. No, oh, I'm going to play this. God, everything is going so slow. Um, well, we can finally get rid of it with our onboard answer. Pajama Goyf, have a good afternoon, buddy. Hmm. Yeah, taking one there is fine. I feel like they're giving us a lot of a lot of room here. Well, that's fascinating. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A little little late to the party. Oh, well, a, a crater hoof as well, huh? Well, our life total is not helping that. What can we get for three here? Oh my god, Neon Tokyo, that's actually adorable. Um, oh, actually, oh, we have no, I was like, we can get Rex Sage out of the graveyard. And that does, it doesn't, A, it doesn't kill anything, and B, like, there's nothing, you know, we can't, because <laughs> we don't have a great, we don't have a graveyard. Um, god, this one's so good. We just have some, man we just have a little mana problems, you know? Okay, hold on. Can we Crater Hoof? Can we Crater Hoof? Oh, no, we'd have to keep two. We'd have to have Channel and Crater Hoof. Ah, oh, that's frustrating. But like, we literally could. We could go to one. I think we just finale for three and see what's there. Okay. 
Yep, search that library. Tireless Tracker, Ignoble, Delighted, Wall of Roots. I think Wall of Roots might be the correct play here. It lets us play Primeval Titan next turn. And it's also a reasonable blocker against their guys. All right, make it 5-5. Five, five. That's totally fine. Great, great, great. We're doing good. Yeah, if they're just going to keep coming in Nissa, we're just going to keep letting them come in Nissa. Do another, do another little hit with the with the thing. Good old Woodsy. Put on top and put on top and play this primeval titan today. All right, we're getting we're getting close. The thing is, we want to do here. I think if we can survive till next turn, we might have a game. What is this, eight, nine mana? We're, we're actually shockingly close to just casting this guy. All right, let's see if they can kill us here. I'm sure they can. It's the last turn we need. Well, she's not super close to ultimating, so I'm not just going to start taking, start losing creatures. <sighs> Questing beast, huh? They're at 24. Good lord. Eight, nine. I think we just attack with Primeval Titan. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we can actually take one of these guys. Let's set it up for Questing Beast and take the Hermit. Yeah, we lose to life if our creatures die, but all our creatures are pretty much big enough to stay alive. Like, I lose two here, but getting rid of both of these guys is pretty good. So, I mean, I'll take that and go to four. I'm not even sure it's worth playing this. Like, we have a 7-7 seven, seven for this guy. The problem is if they can kill any... If, if they can kill our 7-7, seven, seven, then we have to block with the smaller guy. I actually think we're fine if we hit Crater Hoof or... I think this just adds a bunch of creatures that are easy to kill to the board. Oh, they just didn't attack there. Fascinating. I think that's good for us. I'm no expert. Oh, boy. Um, I don't think we care about Boseju here. It might just be Tireless Tracker. Oh, yeah, we'll just cast Dulamog and kill this guy. That's smart, too. That was what we were trying to get to. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, there we go. Thank God. Oh boy, that was a that was a grind fest. I feel like our deck has been is better than it's been performing. This has kind of been my experience with the green decks as well. Like I don't think they're bad. I just think my draws have personally been terrible. So
and I think I'm defining terrible as any draw that doesn't have like a part of our combo, which is like natural order or um, channel or, you know, some combination. Like there's a lot of two card combos in the vintage cube and we're getting ours significantly less frequently than it feels like other people are getting theirs. But I mean, that's just magic, I guess. I don't know. The problem with green in the Vintage Cube is it's not blue or black. Yeah, that's why I often go Sultai, because you get the, the blue and the black, but then you also get to keep the green as well. Fire Blast incoming. You have a, you're a great personality. Fire Blast you. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, yeah, you know what? Sure, I'll keep it. Why not? Look at that delighted halfling just getting in there. Oh, wow. Fascinating. What would be a great draw? Natural order? Sure. I was thinking Wall of Roots would also be a good draw. So we're going to play Wall of Roots. Okay, Spellseeker, get your Ancestral Recall, because you got to have both, right? You can't have Time Walk without the Ancestral. Just, a hard, just some hard evidence, huh? Okay. All right. All right, and natural order. That's not a natural order. Let's get this fat guy. We just play this guy. I don't think it's a risk in this deck. So what the hell? I want all the mana I can get, you know? Okay. Hard evidence. You got it. You got it. Let's see what happens. Are we? Are they going to storm out this turn and kill us? <laughs> oh, they're going to tinker. They're going to tinker the investigate token. The clue. That's fantastic. Aether Flux Reservoir. We're not dead yet. Let's see what we draw. Something that kills us? We got one, two, three, four, ten. Surprisingly close. But not there yet, you know? If I get the Buseji, do I get to put it back in my hand so I can channel it? All right, they're at one. 
couldn't close, but. Okie dokie. Third two. Okay. Do I have to pay 50? Being a one life makes that a little bit harder. Okay. Well, they're got, they're doing so they're doing stuff. They're doing that thing where they storm out, you know. You guys know how we, how we feel about that. We usually really like it. Yeah. Oh, oh, interesting. Okay. Well, that's good for you. So long, Emrakul. Well, we basically win if we can natural order. They have to cast a lot Thank of spells you. in order to... Maybe not that many, I guess. Yeah, this is this is fun. Garador, thank you for the resub, buddy. Welcome back, my dude. Really appreciate it. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> we drew... Hold on a second. Let's not... Let's not be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, let's... I forgot. <laughs> okay, there you go. Continue. <sighs> Gotta love it. And the sad thing is we had three one one power creatures and they had three blockers. So even if we attacked with everything last turn, they would have still stayed at one and blocked our three creatures. So Oh good, they have a tendrils in their graveyard. Wonderful. Gotta love Underworld Breach. Just a very fun interactive card that Yep, it's always brutal to watch. It's always super fun and enjoyable. Ah, God. Cool. Great. Well, don't have any real great sideboard cards against Storm. Crop Rotation, Utopia Sprawl, Oath of Druids, Ren and Realm Breaker, Birthing Pod, Avenger, and World Spine Worm. And then we have these two. I mean, we could bring in Leovold and hope we hit it off of a an invasion. Or a finale of Devastation, rather. <sighs> could also bring in Wooded Foothills, Waterlog Grove, and Zagoth Triome, I guess. Is that any worse than what we're already doing? I don't think so. <laughs> also, Delighted Halfling and Ignoble Hierarch help cast him we can also natural order for him as well and take out hermit We'll keep this because of natural order. 
Running Rail Breaker is not super fast. Like, you actually can't start attacking on turn three or even turn two. Like, you can't attack the turn you cast it because it doesn't untap your forests. It just makes them three threes that are tapped. So, like, it doesn't feel great playing a three three, a three mana Planeswalker and then not being able to attack until the following turn. Well, we're definitely going to kill your Mox Jet here. One, two, this, untap two. Maybe we don't kill the Mox Jet. I think we definitely kill the Mox Jet. What's the play here? Uh, actually, let's attack first, because we're definitely going to sack the uh, the Rex Sage. Oh, good. You have force, force of will. Fantastic. Why wouldn't you have force of will? <sighs> Great. Let's do this play again. So we got four, six, we got six mana. <laughs> Okie dokie. Ah, yes, the old, the old explorer. Great. Wonderful. Yeah, I feel like this game's over. This, this is like probably one of the best green drafts, green drafts I've ever had. And we just lose to the most sad nonsense. <laughs> of course. Yep. And we're not dead yet, but like, uh, I don't know. Oh. Interesting. Hmm. I don't know if that does anything for us. Five, six, seven, eight. We have four, five, six. We are one mana shy of casting this discounted Woodfall Primus because we just haven't hit three land drops. So. Uh. I'm attacking with both. Like, if they have tendrils, they have to, they have to storm for one extra. If the Baleful Strix is dead, what Lotus? What are you talking about? Oh, you just win that game. All right, well, one down, I guess. <sighs> Don't love our chances. Okay, another Ulamog. So Goth Triumph. What are the odds of us actually being able to cast Leovold? Feels low. This hand feels pretty rough. This hand feels much better. 
I will keep it and we'll ship back finale. Long. Oh, we did it! Fucking finally! <laughs> okay. Ulamog next turn, followed by S Steel Seraph, and we might actually might actually have a game. Wait, we do know they have Force of Will, though. They're cycling. Great. Great. Do we go to three and just play Steel Seraph as well? I don't think they're going to have an answer for this, to be honest. Plus, if they go, like, land Lightning Bolt, I don't want to feel stupid, so. And have we done it? They can't snap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nothing more validating than being the Storm deck. With a turn two channel. Okay, so. Valid, vindicated. So that feels good. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to subscribe or follow. There's great ways to support the channel, either on YouTube or on Twitch. Uh, yeah, check out HelloFresh. Great meal delivery service. I'm at the end of the subscription. We got another, uh, the promotion, the sponsorship. We have another week, I think. But yeah, first uh, box is 50% off and then you get free shipping. So it's a great deal. If you guys are looking for a sweet meal delivery service, HelloFresh is a good one. And uh, it's a great way to support the channel. So thank you guys. I'll see you next time.